Well, here we go. Undertaker and Kane versus Chronic. I want to just jump in, Vinny, but I know that you specifically wanted to watch the show for this match. I did. So I feel that if you would like, right. you may uh, you may begin here. Well, I'm going to make t- uh, three points. All right. Three points, and, and then we'll go into detail. First point. No, it is not as bad as I remember. Thank you. It, it, it is. I've seen many matches worse than this. Two, that being said, it's still horrible, and one of the reasons it does not come off as bad is is because there is editing here on Peacock. Hmm. Well, they, 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 there's a point where somebody says a very loud, very naughty word, and Peacock edited that out. So you lose the effect of the mid-match tantrum going on. And three, which kind of brings this first two, two points together. If you want to go watch this and see how bad it really is, you should, but it is... And I, I, I listen, I'm not a... I don't like piracy. You shouldn't do it, everyone. You, the, the, the WWE Network on Peacock is a very reasonably priced service. Very reasonably priced. It's like ridiculously it's cheap. Free for me. <laughs> it's ridiculous. So it's, all, all these matches are easily accessible. You should watch them on there. But to capture the full experience of this match, you must look it up on some other site. It's not hard to find. And do that and just watch. And more importantly, Listen to The Undertaker. Because while you and I, Brian, and maybe Craig, we hasn't, he hasn't charmed yet, you and I thought this match was not nearly as bad as his reputation. The Undertaker in 2001 thought this match was awful. That's clear. Well, this is what I would like to say about this match, okay? At the time, I gave it a dud. And I don't know if I could, in good conscience, give it a much higher score nowadays. However, it was very clear a few things watching this match. Number one, uh, the big problem here was Chronic. Yes. I don't know if you guys what? are aware of that or not. <laughs> but with that said, Brian Adams and Brian Clark are miles better than Omas. Okay. They are miles better than uh, Aziz or whatever his name is. Okay. Uh, Apollo Crews, Commander Aziz. I mean... I've been watching wrestling for a long time, and I've been watching a lot of wrestling over the last several years. I have seen fucking horrors, okay? So watching this match here, it's like, yeah, it's bad, but fuck. I mean, come on. Historically bad? It's ridiculous. But at the time, it was pretty historically bad. Now, one of the things about this match is that the Undertaker was having a very bad day. That's clear. <laughs> These are his buddies. Yeah. Okay? His buddies. Imagine how horrible a match must be. Your buddies are fired afterwards. Your <laughs> friends. Okay? Yeah. Undertaker is having a no good, very bad day. And he is fucking screaming. And forget editing out fuck or whatever. I mean, what they don't edit out is Undertaker desperately trying to make a comeback. And at the top of his lungs screaming, Feed! Feed! Because these fucking guys cannot get in position for his comeback. Brian Adams got totally fucking blown up. And once he got totally fucking blown up, he got totally fucking lost. Big problem. But really, they only got lost for like a split second. It was like, there was maybe, (laughs) man, not a split second, but there was a five to ten second spot where they're totally lost. And they look at each other awkwardly. And then I think Adams gets sent outside. There were a couple of others as well. But one of the things about wrestling, and this this applies to Shawn Michaels when he used to have tantrums, sometimes you're having a match, and it feels like the worst match of all time to you. But to the blokes in the crowd, they don't know what's going on. And it was not a very good comeback by The Undertaker, but, bro, if he had not been screaming feed at the top of his fucking lungs, it would have just been kind of a clunky comeback. It wasn't that bad. No. But to The Undertaker, to Shawn Michaels in some matches with Vader, it's so frustrating that they lose their temper in the middle of the match, and then you as a viewer, if you know what's going on, you see this, and you're like, oh, my God, this fucking match. It wouldn't have been that bad if he hadn't lost his temper. I'm not saying the match was good, okay? It was bad. Mm-hmm. 
But it was only, the match was, I don't even know how long it was. It was about 10 minutes. 10 minutes. Ten and a half minutes. I mean, really, you know, eight and a half minutes of it was passable. Maybe mm-hmm. even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, I mean, it wasn't good, but it was, like, passable. If you watch a lot of wrestling nowadays, if you watch Omos in the ring during a tag title defense with AJ, I mean, fuck. I mean, bro, this was totally competent. But there was enough horrors here, and there was enough of The Undertaker losing his temper that it, like, became this legendary awful match, which, honestly, it wasn't at that level. But it was bad. I love watching Undertaker's face, and you could see him progressively getting angrier and angrier until he finally blows a stack. The fact that uh, Brian Adams, for whatever reason, would not take a bump... Undertaker's throwing his quote unquote soup bones. He grabs his face, throws his head in the air, flips around, and takes a knee. <laughs> yes. He did this numerous times. He would not take a bump for the Undertaker, which I'm sure did him no favors. No. So the match begins, and like Brian said, it's just garden variety bad for a while. Brian Adams is not selling very well. It's just shit like he he can't take a corner. He, he's he's everything's badly timed. Brian Clark can't take a corner. But they're doing stuff. They're, they're like doing, doing, doing a yes, match. Yes, and Brian Clark is trying to be giant X Pac in the corner, and it's not as good as X Pac <laughs> is. And two minutes in, Taker tags in, and you look at his face, you can see he's already upset with everything. Mm-hmm. So they get the heat on him for a minute or two. He's down on the ground screaming at guys to tag in and out. And then about five and a half minutes in, Taker's in there with Adams, and they're running the ropes, and both guys duck a clothesline at the same time, and that's when things really go off the rails. Now the crowd's starting to get restless. They know it sucks. Kane gets a hot tag about eight minutes in. He is trying to do rope spots, like whip a guy in and hit a punch or whatever, but every time he goes to whip one chronic dude in, the other chronic dude is in the way. Happens two or three times. And then Taker loses his mind. Now, here's the key. Here's the key. You mentioned Shawn Michaels once lost his temper in a match with Vader. Probably more than, well, more than once with Vader. But Shawn lost his temper a lot of times. The mm-hmm. the Storm match with Davey Boy where they went off the air. And he's, he gives up. A uh, match with Mr. Kennedy on Raw where he just couldn't believe what he was do- dealing with in there. That's Shawn. This is the Undertaker. Whose gimmick is he's never out of his gimmick. Cool Hand Luke, they call him, because he never, ever loses his cool. And he lost his cool here like I have never seen before or since, including the time he was legitimately lit on fire. He's trying to make a hot tag comeback. Remember when uh, it was the mall and Samito was in a tag match? And oh, he yes. gets the hot tag and screams, I'm a house of fire and there's no one to hit. <laughs> yes. That's basically what Taker did in here. He, he gets in the gets a hot tag, he's a house of fire and is begging, feed, fuck, feed. <laughs> Brian Adams is just pacing, in the ring, mind you, just pacing back and forth along the ropes. So the key is 10 minutes in, Taker has Clark on one side and Adams on the other And he's trying to get them to cut him off. And he's shouting spots at the top of his lungs. It sounds like he's about to cry. Cut me off! Now! And so Brian Adams, of all things, goes for a chin breaker. He puts his head under the Undertaker's chin and drops to his knees. Taker has no idea this is coming. He tries to sell at the right time. It's all fucked up. It's all kinds of horrible. And here is where, in real life and on non-Peacock sites, you can hear the Undertaker scream, Fuck! <laughs> as loud as he can, followed by, Damn it! Which is still on the network. And very quickly afterwards, he pins Clark with a choke slam, And they do a little bit with Stevie Richards afterwards. He takes a choke slam too. Chronic was never seen again. Uh, Stevie was gone until like, he came back with Victoria like a year later. So, yes, it's a terrible, terrible match. It's clearly the worst thing in the show. But you lose a lot of how terrible it was with the censorship. And I will say also this. 
when they won, the crowd was still into it. Yeah, the crowd was into the whole match. That was the other part. They were more into this match than they were half the other matches on the show. That's actually true. It's like how bad are we? <laughs> like the fans liked it. They didn't know what the fuck was going on. You know, somebody here made the analogy to like music, where you're playing the guitar in front of a live crowd and you fuck something up, but you just keep playing. You hope that nobody notices. Yeah. Or I used to do magic. If you do like coin magic or whatever, you fuck something up. Well, you got to keep going and you hope nobody noticed. You don't just fucking start throwing the coins up in the air. Ah, fuck this thing. That's what the Undertaker did. He started throwing his coins and he started smashing his guitar in the middle of his set. Mm. Samito's like story, by the way. Uh, that show that we worked where Samito screamed, I'm a house of fire and there's no one to hit. It was in a mall. Yes. And uh, Sumito showed up, and he says, brother, I need to go buy a pair of shorts for, for tonight. He didn't have any gear. That's, that's he's great. wearing shorts, yeah. but he's got to go buy another pair of shorts. So he goes in a Hot Topic or whatever, and he comes out with his bag. It's, it's got shorts, and he's also got a hat. And so we all go to get ready or whatever, and we're about to go to the ring, and he's got his, his hat and his new shorts on, and the tag is on both. And I'm like, bro, you got to take the tag off. And he goes, brother, you don't take the tag off. I want people to think I stole it. <laughs> yep. All right. Dedicated to the gimmick there. Yes. Your uh, biggest fan says Vinny's Intangibles. <laughs> this should be good. Vinny's Intangibles is that his is intelligent, inspirational, and great will. Brian's Intangibles are Lord. he is a whining, comma, Anger, comma, and his genetically Jack Hammer. Not everyone's a gifted essayist, gifted linguist. We all have our strengths. We're not all wordsmiths out there. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, the Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.